Hello, Father Bjorn here, and I would like to read to you something posted on my personal blog called The Tiniest Hermit. The subject is on silence and can be found at servantmonk.blogspot.com. Every monastic is called to the practice of silence. This does not mean this does not necessarily mean total environmental silence, but inward silence of the mind and heart. As a Kamaldolese hermit once said, Open your mouth only if what you have to say is more beautiful than silence. I'm certain that this hermit has been a, a monk for a long time. Silence becomes beautiful once we become accustomed to and comfortable with it. For the novice monk or nun, silence can be frightening, deafening, and hard to deal with. Transitioning from a life of noise and distraction to a life of silence and intentional devotion is difficult. My own transition took years and I still have bouts of distraction from silence of the mind and heart. Now that I have been a monk for over a decade, there is nothing more beautiful than silence. It allows me to hear the sweetness of the still, small voice of my Creator, to examine my own conscience, and gives me the freedom to just be without any expectations or demands. The hermitage in which I live is on a farm. The owner of the 20 plus acres of land has a large herd of sheep who constantly bleat. He also has peacocks who constantly make noise, in addition to the wild birds, coyotes, and insects which all make their various noises on a constant basis. As if all of this weren't distracting enough, the refrigerator here is old and buzzes very loudly, as does the chest freezer, dishwasher, and the washer and dryer. My environment is far from silent. Despite all of this, I practice an attitude of silence. I remain quiet in speech, continuously pray and meditate, and quietly observe my world without passing judgment about it whenever I am able to. As mentioned in a previous post, I have made my life vows, but still consider myself a spiritual novice. I could always be more silent, less judgmental, more charitable, and less self-absorbed. Silence allows me to see all of these things and to quietly chip away at them until a new and changed person emerges from the rubble of my old self. Any monk or none will tell you that this process is continual. We are always working to shed our skins of imperfection so that we may become the person that our Creator intended us to be. The gentle rhythm of pray, eat, and work, paired with the rule of life that I follow, allow me the freedom to explore the wilderness of silence, or as some would call it, the desert, where I work to turn my loneliness into holy solitude through prayer and meditation. I have experienced the beauty of Carmel, or the heart of Christ, only in glimpses. However, this transcendental wonder draws me to itself time and time again. If I had my way, I would stay in Carmel forever. But alas, we humans are unable to do so because we are imperfect creatures. Despite all of our imperfections, we are deeply and joyously loved by our, by our Creator. It is our calling to share this love with one another in charity and humility. To achieve the ability to do so, we must turn to silence 
and hold up a mirror to ourselves so that we are reminded of our imperfections which ex exist in every human being. If we remain humble, we are able to reach out to one another from a place of love, which is the fulfillment of the law given by Christ. This law does not only belong to Christianity, but all of the major religions in the world teach that loving one another is the desire of the Creator, and that we must strive to make peace and understanding a priority in our lives. There are many ways of doing this, however it is my opinion that practicing silence expedites the process needed to achieve both love and understanding which naturally lead to peace. I would encourage each of you who hear these words to take 10 minutes out of your day to be completely silent. Turn off your phone, TV, and computer and be still. With practice, you may be able to glimpse some of what I have said here. The world is full of hate and evil. Let us therefore work to love and practice charity. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you all the days of your life.